Hello kings and queens and welcome back to The Art of Life and Love. This is an extension of my wellness and creative writing blog also called The Art of Life and Love. I'll put the link down below. My name is Joanna and as promised in my last video titled Why Black Mental Health Matters, I'll put a link to it at the top of this video, I am releasing this bonus video in celebration of Black History Month, which for those of us in the UK is every October. Today, I'll be sharing with you four of the black mental health pioneers and how they contributed to the discussion surrounding black and African-American mental health. All of these amazing human beings have had a huge influence on the world of psychology and deserve to be recognized every month, not just in October. So our very first pioneer for today is called Franz Fanon. Born on the Caribbean island of Martinique, which at the time was a French colony in 1925, Fanon served in the Free French Army during World War II and afterward attended school in France, completing his studies in medicine and psychiatry at the University of Lyon. In 1953 to 56, he served as head of the psychiatry department of Blida Joinville Hospital in Algeria, which was then part of France. While treating Algerians and French soldiers, Fanon began to observe the effects of colonial violence on the human psyche. This led him to write a very famous book called Black Skin, White Masks, which is one of Fanon's most important works to date. In Black Skin, White Masks, Fanon psychoanalyzes the oppressed black person who is perceived as a lesser creature in the white world that they live in and studies how they navigate the world through a performance of whiteness. Fanon argues that as a result of one skin color being black, black people are unable to truly process trauma or they instead make it unconscious. Black people are unable to not think about the fact that they are black and all of the historical and current stigma that comes with that, an important acknowledgement within the mental health community. Fanon is even better known for his classic analysis of colonialism and decolonization, a, a book called The Wretched of the Earth, which was first published in 1961. And finally, Fanon was even more influential in the 1960s Black Power Movement, specifically with the Black Panther Party. And for this guy, I'll leave you with this quote. When we revolt, it's not for a particular culture. We revolt simply because for many reasons, we can no longer breathe. And I don't know about many of you, but that seems to still resonate to this day. Next up, we have a lovely lady called Dr. Joy DeGruy. Born in October 1957, she's an American academic known nationally and internationally as a researcher, educator, author, and presenter. She's one smart cookie and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in communications, a master's degree in social work, and a master's degree in psychology, and a PhD in social work research. She is most well known for her book, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome, America's Legacy of Enduring Injury and Healing, which addresses the residual impacts of trauma on African descendants in the Americas. The book lays the groundwork for understanding how the past has influenced the present and opens up the discussion of how we can eliminate non-productive attitudes, beliefs and adaptive behaviours and build upon the strengths we have gained from the past to heal. She has also developed an assessment scale for measuring respect with regard to African-American male youth. The theory of post-traumatic slave syndrome suggests that centuries of slavery followed by systemic racism and oppression have resulted in multi-generational adaptive behaviors, some of which have been positive and reflective res of resilience and others that are detrimental and destructive. Basically, trauma is passed down from generation to generation and has an impact on the psyche of the black community. Dr. Deguri's seminars have been lauded as the most dynamic and inspirational currently being presented on the topics of culture, race relations and contemporary social issues. Her clients have included academic institutions such as Oxford University, Harvard University, Columbia University, Fisk University, Smith College, Morehouse College and the University of Chicago to name a few. She is also presented to federal and state agencies such as the FBI, probation and parole agencies, juvenile justice judges association and police departments. Our next mental health pioneer is a man called Dr. Naeem Akbar. 
and I think I pronounced that right. His original name, the one he was born with, is Luther Benjamin Weems. He was born in 1944 and he changed his name in 1971 after joining the Nation of Islam. He is a publisher, psychologist, psychology professor and public speaker. Prior to attending the University of Michigan, Dr. Akbar lived within a completely African-American social environment. His freshman year of college marked the first time that he had real contact with white people. At university, Dr. Akbar was active with the Black Action Movement, BAM for short, and he was involved in the strike that closed down classes for three weeks during the late 1960s. After uni and as he worked towards his PhD in clinical psychology, Akbar wrote a dissertation called Power Themes Among Negro and White Paranoid and Non-Paranoid Schizophrenics. In his dissertation, Akbar sought to define and explore the distinctive literature discussing definitions of psychology and mental health for black people specifically. Through this work, Akbar began to seriously question many of the accepted definitions of mental health for black people which had their genesis in European-American psychology. In 1971, after he had converted to Islam and changed his name not once but twice, Akbar became active with the Association of Black Psychologists, the largest black mental health professional organisation in the world. He has served on the association's board for numerous terms and was elected its president in 1987. The association has bestowed all of its most prestigious awards on Akbar due to his professional contributions to the world of psychology. In the late 1980s, he formed his own publishing company called Mind Productions and private consulting company called Naim Akbar Consultants to bring his teaching to a wider audience. In his 1991 paper, Mental Disorder Among African Americans, Akbar maintains his Afrocentric view of psychology and criticises the Eurocentric normative definitions of mental illness that were historically used to classify and label numbers of Afri African Americans as mentally ill. Akbar called this abuse intellectual oppression and argued that African Americans should create their own definitions of normal and abnormal that made meaningful use of an African worldview and was culturally relevant to African Americans. And lastly, but by no means least, we have a queen called Mami Phipps Clark, who is an Amer American social psychologist who, along with her husband, Kenneth Clark, focused on the development of self-consciousness in black preschool children. She met her husband, Kenneth Clark, at Howard University, and he soon convinced her to switch her majors from physics and maths to psychology. I don't know how he managed to swing that one. She graduated magna cum laude in 30, 1938 and then spent some time working in a law office where she was able to witness firsthand the damaging effects of segregation, a rule of law that kept black people and white people separate in America. She soon started graduate school and had two children whilst pursuing her studies. Her master's thesis work was centered on the formation of racial identity and self-esteem. Her work helped pave the way for further research on self-concept among minorities. In 1943, she earned her PhD from Columbia University. Not only was she the only black woman in the entire program, but she also became the second African-American to earn a doctorate from Columbia, the first being her husband. The most famous experiment that the couple conducted was when they showed black children two dolls that were identical in every way, except that one doll was white and one was black. The children were then asked a series of questions, including which doll they preferred to play with, which doll was a nice doll, and which one was a bad doll, and which one looked most like a child. The couple discovered that not only would 59% of the children identify the black doll as the bad one, nearly 33% selected the white doll as the one that they most resembled. The experiment played an important role in the Brown versus the Board of Education case by demonstrating the harmful effects of segregation on children. The Supreme Court went on to rule that racial seg segregation in US schools was unconstitutional. When I started my research for this video, there were so many people that I could have chosen to put in this video. And I decided to just go with four, just to highlight in depth the work that these people have done, the amazing things that they've accomplished in their lifetime, and the fact that 
they've brought hope to a generation. Some of them are still alive today, still giving talks. I'll put loads of their uh, resources down below so that you can have a look for yourself. You can look up some of the books that they've written, educate yourselves, and perhaps even do some of your own research into black mental health pioneers. Thank you so much for watching today and please remember that black lives matter, black mental health matters and black minds matter. If you've liked this video today, if you could go ahead and give me that thumbs up, that would be amazing. And if you could go ahead and press that subscribe button if you want notifications of when my videos come out. And if you want notifications specifically of when my videos come out, go ahead and press that bell icon, especially because throughout October, I may be releasing a few more videos in dedication of Black History Month. So if you want a notification of when they get come out, which won't be on Tuesdays, it'll be on a different day to Tuesday, go ahead and press that bell button. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have an amazing mental health week. Take care. Thank you.